Welcome to Sardinia. Yes, raise eyebrows <laughs> because we are speeding through the Med. Yes, for the first time we are ahead of ourselves. We, uh, we should catch up. We haven't had any time for editing because we've been sailing so fast through it. But the last time you saw us, we were in Malta and had bad weather and just made it to Gozo. And this video is all about Gozo. And it's lovely. I hope you like the film. Coming up, exploring Gozo with friends. The historic beauty of a lovely island. Meeting Project Atticus, the whole family. They teach us a thing or two about freediving. And champagne sailing in Sicily. It doesn't get any better than this. The peace and tranquility of Dweller Bay in Gozo. The storms of last week are miraculously forgotten as we take a trip to explore the caves. The rock face is thousands of years old and the water crystal clear. But there is more to explore on this island, so we leave the kayak and meet up with some old friends who live here. Vernon Mann was a journalist and foreign correspondent with us at ITN and he's now committed his stories to a brilliant podcast called Don't Shoot My Driver. It's well worth a listen. He and his wife, Avril, are now retired and luckily for us, have time to show us the sights. The jewel in the crown is the Citadella. It dates back to the Stone Age and is testament to every era of Maltese history since then. In the famous siege of 1551, over 6,000 people living in the Citadel were captured by the Ottomans. Just 300 escaped over the walls. Since then, the citadel has mostly been used as a fortress. These bells are from the 17th and 18th centuries. The graffiti, possibly earlier than that. Gozo is also famous for its salt flats and churches. The Tarpino is a Roman Catholic church which was modernised in the 1920s. There are 365 churches in Malta and Gozo, one for every day of the year. The Tarpino also makes an excellent backdrop for a selfie. Back to the boat and that evening we recognise a familiar yacht come to join us. Sailing Project Atticus has arrived, sitting pretty and all set for a meet-up in the morning. Well, it's a lovely morning this morning, but I have noticed something that is amiss. Up here, there should be a big blue net. That's where it lives. It obviously got blown off in that storm along with our solar panel so feeling a bit bad about that because that's all ended up in the bottom of the ocean and uh, not going to be able to retrieve that but just around the headland here there's a place called the Blue Lagoon which is a bit of a, a tourist spot it's like a big natural lido but the, a load of rubbish during that storm has been sort of pushed in there and it's gathered there I was telling uh, Jordan from Atticus uh, about it yesterday so he suggested well why don't we go and have a bit of a clear up so we're all going to get together uh, get our stuff I haven't got a net to collect it, which is what I would have really liked, but we've just got to pick it up by hand, bag up the stuff and uh, try and make it look a bit better. Atticus 2 is a beautiful Pacific Seacraft 40. She's 25 years old and has already sailed across the Atlantic with her family, who I should tell you a bit about. Jordan and Desiree have been cruising for seven years after a background working on super yachts. 
Atticus 2 is their second boat, which they are transforming into a family home for living and cruising off-grid. They've recently been joined by baby Isabella and Captain Oso. You can okay. check out their brilliant YouTube channel here. Yes, they have a quarter of a million subscribers. Wow. And here they are in person. Here is the back of Jordan. <laughs> yeah, what's going and, on, guys? <laughs> and the very difficult thing of getting dogs and babies onto boats. Yeah, dogs, babies, <laughs> stuff. Can I move? I got the baby. Oh, so can okay, you hold her, please? <laughs> we are detached. Like all family outings, this takes planning. We have the people on board, we have the cameras, and we are now ready to begin our mission to clean up the lagoon. What we need, though, is because we're not going to be able to use the music from International Rescue, we yeah. ought to hum it. Yeah. Do you know it? No, I don't. Uh, but so I, it, one I generation. It means nothing, does it? It means nothing. <laughs> A bit of nostalgia for those of us of a certain age. Who could forget the Thunderbirds? Today we give Scott Tracy a couple of new team members and launch our own Thunderbird. Okay, I think we've got I think we've got ignition on this thing. Okay. Let's let's see if we can do it. Chuck it in the water. Never liked that drone anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, that is that is cool. Oh Steve, your drone's dripping on me. <laughs> We're in a plane, right? Uh, hell yeah. Oh, really? No, just kidding. <laughs> no. We've got an electric engine. We don't go fast. <laughs> yeah, we got 20 horses behind this puppy. Hey, you're at the front where you belong. Oh, so it's like, so we're going to land, right? <laughs> I signed up for a land excursion. The lagoon is a veritable playground, so we bring the kayak and paddleboard for fun. Desiree is very trusting with Issa. Oh, where are we going? Where are we? Issa's like just another day. This is it. This is how the pros do it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no paddle needed. The only thing is, we are a bit late for the cleanup because someone else got here first. Okay, I guess we shouldn't be disappointed that we've come down to the hole and all the rubbish is already being cleared up. <laughs> someone cleared up the rubbish. There's still just a little bit of plastic, so I'm going to take that <laughs> in my big plastic bag. Get the bags. little bits. Oh, hi, are you helping? <laughs> this is great. Oh, so it's going to do it too. Yeah, is there yeah. a stick in there you can fetch? Would you like me to throw a stick and you can jump in and get it? Uh. There's things in here that look like plastic that aren't. Are they definitely not plastic? These things aren't plastic, they're real. There's loads of them, different sizes. Look. So it's like a little plastic cover for something, so it must be a, a skin that something shed. Right, good thing, baby. The ocean made this, <laughs> I think. <laughs> Are you going to eat it? <laughs> <laughs> Issa was born in Malta and is adapting well to the European climate, as well as life as a liverboard. So she's doing well. Yeah, is this the first so. time in, have you been body boating with people? <laughs> you with baby, for sure. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, a lot of firsts for her, man. Yeah, she, she had her first dinghy ride two days ago, mm -hmm. right? Yes, so yeah, did. it's like all of it. Everything we do, it's the first time mm -hmm. at this point. Mm -hmm. She was, she's used to marina life, I guess, but not sailing and cruising. Mm -hmm. But she's taking to it. I think she so. She seems to really like it. Yeah. And yeah. getting into a routine of sleeping exactly. and then having activities. Yeah. yeah. I found that as long as I'm obsessive about her sleep, then she's a happy baby. But sometimes that gets annoying because I'm like, she needs to sleep now! And he's like, we can calm down with the sleep, Desiree. <laughs> yeah, it's actually funny that we were just saying this morning, it's easier sailing and moving with her yeah. than it is like doing excursions. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas I just thought it would be the opposite. I thought sailing would somehow be like hey, the also, hard part with uh -uh. the baby. But it's not. It's the going here, right? It's 
it's exploring the blue hole with a baby. What are you doing inside? Yeah, that's, that's you inflatable. Doing? <laughs> <laughs> yes. The claws, yeah, exactly. Now, one thing I've always, ever since I was watching you, I want to know why you call each other Buddy. Hey, Bud, how's it going? Feel safe, Buddy? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I actually thought one of you was called Buddy at one point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I guess it started when we first started dating. Jordan came, Hi. he started calling me like, I don't know if you tried, babe. I probably tried to call you a conventional yeah. term of endearment one time. Right. And, and then I, you were like, D don't do Shut that. it down. She's just not into yeah. it. Yeah, and so he's like, what do you want me to call you? Like, bro? And I was like, yeah, whatever. Just not like honey, babe, so, lovey, whatever. Yeah, so then I started calling her all the names you would never imagine. So I think the first one was... Uh, uh, call me bro for a while. Bro, but then it was... Um, yeah, I can't even remember if I called you Chode yeah. or like lots of names that are totally inappropriate. You know what I mean? Like you might call like a, a guy friend at a poker night. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Like just not. Oh, yeah. it's a good plan not to be babe. I think. Yeah, that's yeah. that's great. Oh. It works. I mean, it works for some people. I think it's sweet, but I just I don't know for some reason I was just like eh, not for me. It doesn't yeah. work for me. But so. how we both called each other, bud? Well, we do, do we even have an ex explanation. We do that a lot. That? Like we just like you know what it's like when you live with someone. You have yeah. like a common language. Your so, own culture. Like I start calling you bud. You call me bud i wish we had a better explanation I'm but, you know. but when, it, you, when we were coming over on the boat as well you were saying that you enjoy the obstacle so for me that meant you enjoy the challenge of something i don't know that i inherently see a challenge and I'm like oh great let's do it i've just made the conscious decision <laughs> it's like throughout my life i've seen that every time that i try to be lighthearted about the challenge and like dive into it rather than retreat it's always worked out better. Like my life has gotten better when I embrace the challenge and I don't run away. So habitually I act that way. I'm not sure that I inherently feel that way. Like, and so that's why I got this tattoo. Like the obstacle is the way it's like, I need to see that. I need to be like, oh shit, this is awful. It's never going to work out. What are we going to do? And I'm like, okay, all right, okay. Like, this is the whole point right here, right now. This is the thing that makes us better, makes something interesting happen, makes like, it's like all the good things come from us handling this in a certain way, you know? So that's at least my worldview. And I think that I probably take it too far. So I remember when we first moved on Atticus 2, I was like, this is amazing. I can't believe this is our boat, this is our home. And I was just like, I would just look at the ceiling and like smile stupidly, you know? And now I'm at a point where I take it for granted that it's my home, you know? And so th these last two days for us, it's been, oh my gosh, I can't believe we have this baby and she's happy and we're doing it. And, and it just feels so good just to like survive a day out off grid in a beautiful place with this little thing. But I think we're gonna get to a point where we're gonna take it for granted. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah, we're in that phase right now where it's all terribly exciting and, and we're not used to it yet. Yeah. And even like the cruising, it's funny. I mean, we've been sta stationary in a marina for like eight months, seven months. So even just the cruising feels that way. And then all these systems that we've been working on to make life on board with a baby work, like having them all working in harmony so far, knock on wood, <laughs> um, has just been like a super thrilling experience. Like we were talking to my parents yesterday and yesterday we were sailing, had the washing machine running, had the water maker running. And talking to them on the and, and we had footage uploading like to the cloud <laughs> all at the same time. Like that's just <laughs> mind blowing, you yeah. know? Yeah. And the next stop is Turkey. Greece and then Turkey. And then Turkey. Yep. Greece yeah. and then Turkey. Yeah. Yeah, the the basic idea for us is just like spend as much time as we can, just kind of island hopping, yeah. finding small little places where not a lot of people go to. And the best thing about Greece as well is there's so many islands that you wake up, the wind's blowing in this direction, and we just go to that island. Totally. That's awesome. That's what we're hearing, so we're, we're, we want to do that now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's funny because we've been like cruising with quotes for like seven years maybe. But like, if you actually look at the time that we were doing that, like, where should we go today? Oh, let's go there, that would be fun. It's been an extremely small amount of time, right? I mean, so small, because we've either been on a mission to get somewhere far yes. away because of hurricane season or whatever. Or fixing things. Or we're fixing things. And so I was gonna say that vibe of 
you don't need a plan. There's a thousand anchorages, so just kind of go wherever you sh want to. That's how Maine was. Mm -hmm. But we basically did that for two weeks, and then the rest of the time we were working on the boat, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm excited to actually actually do cruising for, yeah. like, months. Mm -hmm. That'll be a first for us. That'll mm -hmm. be amazing. And fixing on the boat, as, as we all know, never stops. Yeah. Right. So that just has to be factored in. Yes. yes. <laughs> Is that the end of the interview? Yeah. I think we're going to finish right there. Well done, Isaiah. Yeah. But we aren't quite finished because both Jordan and Desiree like are that. expert freedivers. I'm feeling like I'm having lots of second thoughts right now. <laughs> And despite the cold weather, Jordan is going in. Jordan's stripping off and you're... <laughs> I'm putting my jumper back this. on. But you're supposed to be <laughs> learning to free dive. That I was am. What you said I'm learning week. by observation. <laughs> this is the first step to being a real free driver. <laughs> Absolutely, you observe <laughs> the experts. Yeah, lesson one. <laughs> so all the divers have gone in and they can come through and out into the sea. That's the divers with oxygen tanks. Just getting to the bottom would be an impressive dive for Jordan. The hole is said to be 35 meters deep. Where's he gone, Osif? Where's he gone? Where's he gone? Check it out. How was it? Oh wow! That is definitely not 35 meters. You go not even close. <laughs> There's no way I can go that deep. But uh, it was fun going down past the divers, though. I don't think any of them noticed me. I was so bummed. I was like, "Hey, look over here! I don't have a tank on." It's more or less straight down, and then it kind of the whole thing funnels out that way. So Judy's obviously taking notes for her. For her first lesson. Yeah, so oh the, my gosh. The, you do your breathing on top, do you? you yeah, sit a there lot quite a while. of breathing. That was what our instructor said, is that she thought freediving was about holding your breath, but what got her into it is it's actually about breathing. The holding your breath part is like the shortest part of the whole thing. So if you're breathe, I mean, yeah, it's just like the technique, the activity, it's all about how you're breathing, how yeah. long you're breathing. And the free diving is the part that happens after that, and it's rather quick. <laughs> there is definitely a skill to this. There is another tunnel, this time above the water. With Oso on the lookout, we make our way through the natural path in the rock. On the other side is the bay. Fishing boats, the colorful Maltese boat huts we see everywhere, and a cafe. Good, because Jordan needs a coffee to warm up. Now this is real adventure. It is different, isn't it? It is so different, different with a baby. Yeah. I feel kind of paralyzed with her. Like my only job is to just hold her. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hey. Yeah, she's enjoying it. <laughs> Good baby. On the way back, we are against the wind, and I have to be honest, it is hard going. Another reason it's a good idea to go out with friends who can give you a lift home. <laughs> the next morning, the wind is right for our sail to Sicily. We leave at first light. Our Italian flag is a little the worse for wear, but easily mended. For the second time, we must get a new one. See, Italians are helpful. They give you a flag that you can't put on upside down. <laughs> Should be more like that. 
and we are on our way. 50 nautical miles is a day sail, but we get lucky. The wind moves perfectly for us and we get to Licata by nightfall. The next day, we are heading west. If there is a god, this is where she is. Champagne sailing. Yeah, champagne sailing makes you brave, doesn't it? Flat water, <laughs> gentle breeze, standing on the bow. <laughs> no, I do expect you to do it in a force eight now. Yeah, and, no. you know, I've got I've got that the Swell Pro, the SD4 is really wa properly waterproof, so that can be in front of you in a, in a howling gale and, and rain and still and still feel me as good. So yeah, I will do a video on that. Um, I've been promising it for a while. I guess have to have to get round to to doing the edit, but I'm very pleased with it. Uh, yeah, great pictures there, and you might have noticed. The shot actually really close to the bow, looking back as well, wasn't done with the uh, with the drone. A lot of people say, oh, how do you get the drone in that close? Well, it's tricky to get a drone in that close. So that's done with the, the 360 and it's done with a one inch version and the quality is just as good. I, it's difficult to tell, I think it's great. Yeah, no, it was great. I felt like I had an eight, eight camera shoot <laughs> with <laughs> just <good>. us. <laughs> but yes, Gozo, we've got to talk about Gozo because yeah. Gozo was lovely. We'd have liked to have spent more time in Gozo. We got good weather in Gozo, which was was nice. Thanks to, uh, to, to Avril and to to, and um, Vernon for showing, for us, showing around. us around yeah. and uh, doing all that stuff with us. So it was really good. Yeah, it was great stuff. And you do check out his uh, his podcast as well. It's great. I'm about three quarters of the way through now. <laughs> the only thing, though, <laughs> with Gozo and with Malta as well, is that there are a lot of cranes around because there's a lot of building going on. So if you want the tranquility of the island, yes. I would I would get in there quick. It's still, I mean, it's still, it's still lovely. I mean, I think Vernon and Avril have been there for, for quite a few years and they, they're sort of saying, well, yeah, it's changed a lot. Lots of building going on. You do see it everywhere, but it's still a lovely place. We really enjoyed it, didn't we? Yeah, we did. No, it's, it's, it's lovely. Mm. Yeah, definitely. And meeting up with Project Atticus, what fun. Yes. <laughs> it was just fun. Yeah, it's a really lovely <laughs> couple. I should say family now, growing yeah. family. Yeah, I mean, they've got their hands full with that, you know, to, to, to run a YouTube channel and have a baby at the same time. I, I take my hat off to any, anyone that does that That's but we wish difficult. them well we wish you well going through yes. the med as yeah. well the, the other way seeing greece and yes. turkey i think you'll love it good for them a really yeah. good boat coming over to europe that's what we want more americans doing that we're going the <laughs> other way of course we're going <laughs> <laughs> but yes it's all good fun and hopefully we'll meet up with them somewhere else somewhere else in the world at some we point we promise each other the south pacific so yeah, yeah that would be great See if we can do that but it's been fantastic we're here in sardinia and hopefully the next episode will show you a little bit more about our journey across the south of sicily and here, which yeah. are a bit of a grey day today, but Still that's lovely. it's rare. And yeah. it, we've had some really, really lovely times here yeah. already. <laughs> so thank you very much to our patrons and thank you to our subscribers. And thank you for watching. And if you want to become a patron, do think about joining us. We have a great WhatsApp group. Mm. So if you're sailing around here or sailing around anywhere, really, you'll find someone who's sailing in the same place, which is, which is good. Yeah, it's a good group. Thank you for watching. Thanks for watching.